let's just take a moment and remind ourselves what I've started regarding surfaces in three dimensions. So what's you're not going to see on this screen are just right now is the the sphere and the equation of the the plane where we graphed the part of the plane that's in the first octant. Um, we just recently had a segment that introduced the concept of cylinders. And I had a little homemade definition of cylinder to um, fit in your brains. That's a little easier to read than the textbook version um, and conveys most of the message, but not all of it. Think of it as the two dimensional shape that stretches or extends forever in the third dimension. So what you're about to see is a perfect opportunity to use the pause button. I'm going to put some examples up here on the screen. You're going to hit pause. You're going to try to sketch these on your own. And then I'll show you solutions. All right. Pause. OK, so now you've unpaused. This first example is a parabola in the Z, Y plane, which you could think of as maybe the board at the front of the classroom, if we were in a classroom. And you could also think of it as there is a variable x there, but it's not showing because it's 0 times x. So this is a parabola that stretches forever in the x direction, opens in the positive z direction, and here's the visual for that. Now I didn't hand sketch it, it's pretty clear. I got help from our friends at GeoGebra. But I'll show you some uh, sketches of some other graphs um, in another segment, and I already sketched this one for you before. All right, the next one, which looks like the equation of a circle, is actually a cylinder if it's a surface. And take the cylinder radius 2, and it extends forever in the z direction. And finally, z is equal to 4 minus x squared, is that opening downward parabola that extends forever in the direction of the y-axis. And you can see that here for a third one. Okay? Now, let me show you another type of surface or a category of surface. So I'm going to do a little scrolling here, nothing fancy. So the category is called quadric surfaces. Think uh, quadratics or second power is the highest power. And uh, certainly a cylinder, uh, the circular cylinder is in that kind of category. So we have this equation here, z equals x squared plus y squared. And I don't know what kind of graph comes to mind when you look at that. Could it be a circle of some kind? Or are you seeing parabolas? So one way to look at this without using fancy technology, remember this, this type of technology, it didn't even exist to someone like the us um, even 15 years ago. Certainly it would have been way more advanced technology than was available in the classroom then. Um, but when I was in school the first time, this was by hand and kind of scary because drawing in three dimensions makes me a little bit nervous. So let's suppose that we were to replace z with some values, and let's just see what happens. If z is 0, x squared plus y squared equals 0 is uh, not a circle. It's actually a single point. It is the origin. In three dimensions, it's the point 0, 0, 0. It's the only coordinates that satisfy x squared plus y squared is 0. If z is 1, think one unit up in the z direction or one unit off your table that's a circle right there folks radius one if z is four that's a circle radius two if z is nine so nine units above your desk above your paper that's a circle radius three now the name of the shape is called paraboloid but I'm going to use uh, the software now to give you a better visual. So let's transition here. 
All right, so this first equation we're going to look at is the three-dimensional surface that I was just hinting at. Let me uh, activate it here. Aha! I do see a circle, and I do see parabola. If you're one unit off the ground, there's a circle cross-section that is radius 1. If you're four units off the ground, there's a circle cross-section that is radius 2. And nine units off the ground, it's radius 3. This might remind you of in second semester calculus doing uh, volumes of rotation. We're just looking at the surface itself. All right, so let's turn this one off. What do you suppose would happen if it said x equals y squared plus z squared? Just switch the variables around. Well, let's peek. Oh, so that looks like the same shape, but it's opening in the x-axis direction. I got a parabola. All right, circle cross sections. All right. I'm certain if this said y equals x squared plus z squared, it would open in the y direction. I'm not going to show it to you. You can go find that. All right, let's turn that one off. z equals, so that's going to go in the z direction, 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So that sounds like a whole bunch of upside down something. I'm just going to give you a peek at it. Boom. All right, side view. Parabola, four units up, opens down. Parabola, opens down, four units up. Circle, cross sections. All right. And for this list of paraboloids, if you have coefficients, you could stretch the shape. Anyone want to make a guess? Let's see if your guess works. Similar, but that now looks more like an elliptical shape. All right. So see parabolas, but this cross section is elliptical. Now, let's peek at a couple of other categories just very quickly. Remember, I'm going to come and sketch some of these by hand in another video segment. I want you to sort of see them in advance. And for those with actual drawing skills, you draw without me. I, you don't necessarily need my help to do this. All right, so let's look at another screen here. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. Well, wait a second, Professor. That is a sphere. We know that one already. Yep, that's a type of quadric surface. Let's look at another one. Look at that algebra. Kind of remind you of something? If you're thinking ellipse, you are thinking in the right direction. This graph has elliptical cross sections. It's five units in the y direction and three units in the x direction and two units up and down in the z direction. You could call it an ellipsoid. You could call it, oh, I don't know, some sort of a football almost. And let me show you what happens if we were to rewrite the equation. But now, aha, there's a minus sign in here. Well, if you remember the other member of the family of conic sections, hyperbola, hopefully comes to mind. I don't have my students graph this on the next um, uh, exam, but I love to look at it because it's kind of interesting. It's sort of like, like an hourglass. It has hyperbola side view, circle top view, definitely something that's a little bit interesting. It's not impossible to draw that, but I won't go into the details now of how do you know which sides of the hyperbola and which sides of the circle. It's not difficult, but I wanted to show you because I had the toys present. And one more before I close this segment out. What if it's z equals and not y squared plus x squared, but what if it's minus? 
The little multiplier here is just to assist with the scaling so you can see it better. This one is fun. I'm going to tell you the name first. It's called hyperbolic paraboloid, otherwise known as a saddle. There's a type of chip that looks a lot like this that might be available some places where you live. But sometimes it's called a saddle graph. Look, there's a parabola there. Look, there's a parabola there. But if you look at it from above, it takes hyperbolas to do that cross section. Fascinating stuff. I will even show you how to sketch that particular graph in my next segment because I think using the software feels a little bit like cheating if my test direction says you sketch it yourself. All right. Until next time. Catch you later.